what's the name of your business, Eddie? Hands Free Fishing. Hands Free Fishing. That's, <laughs> that is appropriate. That's right. You know what? You and me got a little something in common. We have, I have no use of one arm. You got no use of two. That doesn't slow you down. No. You can't stop. No. And why would you? Look, I don't know. I don't want to sit at home on the couch. Absolutely not. You know. Man should have the best work boots and the best mattress he can buy. Because if you're a man and take care of your family, you should either be working or sleeping. Yep. On average, when you're fishing up here, how many fish will you get per net? Well, if you do right, I don't know how many fish, but you can average five to 600 pounds every 200 per, per net. Per Yeah. And what's the biggest one you've got? An Asian carp? Over 100 pounds. Wow. What are we likely to see today? Well, now that the Asian carp are here, we'll catch silver carp. You know, wow. and if five, six years ago, we would catch nothing but buffalo. There we go. Whoa, that's a good one right there. So how many days a week do you do this? Uh, three or four. You know, as much as weather permits, basically. What would you say to those folks who are beginning to realize these fish are here? What do we need to do about them on a large scale? Everybody needs to work together. The commercial fishermen need to give some. The sports fishermen need to give some. Everybody needs to work together to, so we can at least try to control the population of the Asian carp. At least a dent in it. Yeah. The biggest populations in Kentucky right now are the lower Ohio River, down by Smithland, a couple pools up maybe. Uh, Kentucky and Barkley Lakes now, obviously, and uh, the tailwaters there, the Tennessee and the Cumberland Rivers below the, those two big lakes. They're actually moving up those uh, rivers, unfortunately, um, by the Mississippi River, and really just about any tributary in the western part of Kentucky that you can think of that connects directly into the Ohio and the Mississippi Rivers, you're going to have a lot of Asian carp. These are a very bad fish for our system. They, they eat the, the zooplankton. Uh, which, which is the is, bottom of the food chain. Right, that's where our young fish that's their food chain, that's where they start, you know, what they feed on. Direct competition for that and the sheer numbers of these fish are gonna overcrowd our native fish. If all they were doing was taking something out that didn't hurt anything, we wouldn't really care. But all of our fish species, our sport fish species, rely on zooplankton at some point in their life. And there's gotta be a certain amount of those zooplankton in the water for these things to survive in good numbers. My fear is when we get too many of those fish in those waters and they're taking out all that uh, food, our reproduction is going to go way down and we won't see that right away because we won't all we'll see is that the growth on these things and the fish that people are catching look really good they're catching bigger and bigger fish but we won't know that uh, their recruitment has gone down because the young fish didn't have anything to eat mm -hmm. until it's too late i don't think people realize how many millions and millions of fish are down here you know yeah. you see them down here you'll see them you'll see the silvers they're the ones that jump out of the water what you don't see so often are the huge big heads which get a lot bigger than that. If you hear a big splash and see a bunch of fish move at the same time, you may be in a, in a school of big heads. Yes, and they're not hard to find. They're all over our system now. Yeah. It's, uh, they're a dangerous fish. Actually, used to <laughs> bent the dip net a while ago when we tried to get in a boat with us. I'm glad he hit that net. <laughs> the look in his eyes was, I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> You're from? West Central Illinois. Illinois. West Central Illinois, okay. Originally. You were up there when you, you know, as we're, as we're out here fishing, we're seeing all these silver carp jumping and invasive species. Tell us how this, when this first started impacting up there, which is really, the, well, I guess, the Illinois River around that area. Yeah. What was the talk and what was the thought process when all that was going on? It just basically overwhelmed the river within a matter of a couple years. I mean, it's way worse up there than yes. it's down here so yes. far. Yeah, it just over, overwhelmed it. I catch more silvers in Barkley and more of the big heads in Kentucky. It seems to me like there are more markets coming available for these fish. Well, there's just one in western Kentucky now. Right. But they're saying that, you know, they're supposed to open one up in Wycliffe and, you know, and all that. Right now, uh, just about every aspect of the markets are getting better. Uh, China's getting a little looser with their import uh, issues, uh, but also domestic markets. People are starting to find out these things really taste good 
and like you've had on your show, I think, <laughs> it is for good. sure. You know, people say farmers are really good. We did try it, and if you have tried it, it is delicious. Right. Now, when you talk about China, are we sending these them over there frozen, whole, or how, how do we send the, that market over there? Yeah, those are sent over frozen. Um, they're uh, eviscerated, and the heads are on, and they're mostly interested in big head heads. Hmm. Now, they're trying to expand that market to include uh, silver carp now, as well as uh, the entire bodies. What's in the heads that, that uh, is uh, The eyeballs are a big deal there. Um, and they, of course, the cheek meats are all considered succulent. And uh, it's basically the brains, everything in there, that's, that's what they want to eat. So that's a lot of it is soup, and they'll have the heads sitting on the side of the, of the bowl, and they'll just kind of pick at the heads and eat the soup. They're native right. to Asia. Why do they want our fish over there? Why can't they use, right. utilize theirs? Well, Asian carp are the most cultured fish in uh, Asia and Europe together. Um, so, uh, they, of course, they've been cultured for thousands of years, but they fished them down over there quite a bit uh, in some places to extinction. And they've also, when you look at the pollution in China, it's a big issue right now. When a person comes from China and, and comes to the Mississippi River, like below Kentucky Lake, and they see these huge silver carp jumping in the air and they see how robust they are and they, and they get to see them close up and how thick they are and how well fed they are. Uh, they, they just go crazy. It's amazing to them because Asian carp over there don't jump. Silver carp don't jump. You talked about the fact that they fish them into extinction. Can we do that here? <laughs> you know, I don't think we'll ever fish them to extinction because you'll, the market will never uh, hold up to that but we can fish them down and control them. And that's, that's what our biggest uh, push is gonna be for the, getting the markets into Kentucky. Uh, and again, there's other markets besides Chinese markets, the domestic, domestic markets coming up. Um, we have a restaurant chain that just recently started working with one of our fishermen to try to see if they can get it on their menu. They're selling for $17 a plate in Chicago and Louisiana. What else is going on out there? The fish meal market is really coming up. Uh, evidently, there was an issue in uh, Chile where a lot of the fish meal was uh, produced before. They've had an issue with their fish populations being overfished. And so the United States fish meal market and the export market for fish meal has gone way up. Now explain what that is. Fish meal is, is additives for dog food and cat food and stuff like that. They uh, basically, the, dog, the, the grade of the fish doesn't have to be food quality which is really big because then now uh, when they have to quit fishing for instance right now in the summertime because the quality of meat goes down it don't matter to the fish meal industry they just basically dehydrate it anyway and get a powder out of it what else uh, i just talked to a person out of louisiana and she wants to come to kentucky because of uh, her ethnic uh, uh, market in the united states she has like five different ethnic groups that she sells to she can't get enough asian carp right now so she's no interested kidding. she's interested in coming in there's a a uh, fellow out of Alaska. I uh, met him out in Western Kentucky after he had talked to some of our Kentucky uh, development folks. And uh, he's interested in bringing a processing ship from Alaska. He's got an entirely different market. And uh, he's talking about getting as many Asian carp as anybody I've ever talked to as far as processing. I'm talking about 100,000 pounds a day. For what? Uh, he's got like a minced product, uh, something like canned and uh, also minced. And he, but he had several different uh, avenues he was going to go to. Now you mentioned something the other day that just blew my mind. You were talking about the fact that the oils in these fish were used for certain things. What was that? BP has uh, contacted one of our commercial fishermen who is also a distributor, uh, and they're interested in doing research on the oils uh, from Asian carp to use them in there um, as a, a product to break down sulfur in their, in their oil. A lot of their oil they get is high in sulfur, and so they want to, uh, they need something that's going to break that sulfur down. And I guess it takes very little fish, amount of fish oil to break down quite a bit of sulfur in, in the uh, oils. Now, what do we have on the horizon that, that you're looking at in Kentucky that we can do to, to help this problem? Well, we've got a lot of things going on. We, of course, we've been working a lot with the uh, Micra and Mississippi River uh, states. Uh, and going to Washington and trying to get interest in Washington and get us some funding so we can get some of this stuff going a little bit quicker than what it normally would. The markets uh, research and stuff like that. We've been working with Pennsylvania and West Virginia in terms of uh, fishing down the leading edge to keep these things from going up into Pennsylvania, for instance. We've got money coming to us from, the, from a foundation there. And West Virginia and we are putting a little money in to fish down the leading edge in the Greenet Pool. Um, we're going to hopefully have a tournament in Kentucky and Barkley Lakes to, to try and do something about that and crazy numbers that's showing up in there. 
I'm thinking that in a two-day tournament, we can remove 200,000 pounds of fish easy. Wow. And, and so we're going to try have a trial tournament uh, to see how that works out. Uh, it'll be set up so that there's observers and stuff to watch for bycatch and stuff, just to make sure that we're not hurting one, we're helping having people out there. But uh, there's just all kinds of things going on like that right now. Best case scenario? Best case scenario is all these different people that I've been talking to, and I, right now I'm talking to at least a half a dozen different businesses about wanting to come to Kentucky. Best case scenario is they come down here and we get these fish, uh, start removing these fish in numbers enough to start controlling their numbers. Uh, worst case scenario is that uh, none of the companies uh, can manage to come through and we don't do anything. If we don't do anything, they're going to end up everywhere in Kentucky. One of the big issues uh, that we've also been working with here is how do we stop the spread of these things. Um, it, through flooding and natural means, these things are going to get in a lot of different bodies of water. But we can keep people from moving them around. So we're also uh, going to try to uh, work with the public and see what we can put together in terms of regulation to stop people from unintentionally moving these things around through by bait or, or whatever. So education. Education is huge and that's another part of this uh, project that we're really pushing pretty hard is teach the people what, what the issues really are, uh, teach them how to identify an Asian carp that helps, uh, but more than anything uh, just be really careful in how they move these things around. It's not an issue that can't be overcome and I think a lot of people are discovering that. Thank you so much for visiting with us today and keeping us up to date on this. You're welcome.